What's going on guys? My name is Matt and I am back with a new budget build. This time the price point is $300 and for that price I was able to get some really great performance. For example, it can play PUBG at medium settings with a buttery smooth 60 FPS. Now this is a build with new and used parts but the cool thing is that the majority of these parts are readily available at the price I paid. So if you're wanting to put something like this together, then it's definitely possible and I'll be discussing other options depending on your preferences throughout the video. So without further ado, let's get into the parts that make up this PC. So the heart of this build and one of the reasons I was able to get so much performance for the money is because of the CPU I went with, which is the Intel Xeon X3440. This is an overclockable quad-core CPU with hyper-threading on the LGA1156 platform. While this is an older chip, it's still very capable, and when overclocked, it rivals the performance of a Ryzen 3 CPU at stock clocks, but the best part of all is this guy is readily available for only $20, with free shipping from AliExpress, and unlike the LGA 2011 Xeons, the motherboards for these are actually very reasonable price. Speaking of which, the motherboard I paired with the CPU is the P55CD53 from MSI. This board has the 16x PCI slot we need for our GPU, and allowed me to get a decent overclock on my CPU. When picking out an LGA 1156 motherboard, make sure to get a P55 board and not an H55 as P55 is much better for overclocking. These P55 boards are readily available on AliExpress and I paid just under $60 with free shipping for mine. Cooling the CPU is the Cryorig M9i, which is the best budget CPU cooler on the market. I was having trouble finding a deal on a used CPU cooler, so I just decided to pick this guy up for $20 new. With this cooler, you're getting the cooling performance of the 212 EVO in a more compact and stylish design with nickel plated copper heat pipes, and it even includes a large tube of thermal paste that could be used to change out the thermal paste a number of times. And it's also great if you're following the Verge's PC build guide as you'll definitely need all of it. For RAM, I went with a 2x4 gigabyte kit of G-Scale RAM that I got in a combo deal off Craigslist for $25. This is a pretty average deal, so when looking for DDR3, try and pay $25 for 8 gigabytes. 8 gigabytes of RAM is plenty for gaming, especially at this low of a budget. And the cool thing is, is that there's still two open RAM slots on this motherboard for upgrading to 16 gigabytes of RAM in the future. For the graphics card, I went with an Asus GTX 770, which I picked up for $75 with free shipping from eBay. This card has a really nice cooler design with nickel plated heat pipes and a very nice backplate, which wasn't super common for this generation of cards. The GTX 770 is a great card for light to moderate 1080p gaming and is perfect for all the popular esports titles out right now. Though the 2GB of VRAM may be limiting for future AAA gaming, for right now this card holds up really well. With that being said, if I had more money in the budget, I would have opted for a more powerful GPU, which I'll explain why later in the video. For storage, I allocated $40 of the budget and was able to get a 240GB SSD, which was plenty of storage for the OS and all the games tested and gives you the opportunity to add more storage in the form of a mechanical hard drive later down the line. While I recommend opting for an SSD whenever possible, if you need a lot of storage up front, going with a 1TB 7200 RPM mechanical hard drive might not be a bad idea. The drive I went with is the OCZ TR200, a budget SSD I got on sale for $40. While this isn't the greatest SSD ever, it's still miles better than a hard drive in boot times, program loading times, and file transfers. Moving on to the power supply, I went with the tried and trusted EVGA 450BT. This guy goes on sale about once a month for $25, which is what I paid for it. For the $25 price point, you're getting a reliable 450 watt 80 plus certified PSU that while non-modular, it does have all black sleeve cables, which is great for keeping a clean aesthetic. Finally, for the case, I went with the DIY PC BG01, which I got on sale for $35 shipped. 
This case is probably the best budget case I have ever worked with. It has three included fans, two at the front and one blue LED in the back. The front panel has a left and right blue LED effect that looks really awesome. It has a vented PSU shroud, plenty of room for cable management with a good number of cable tie down points and the list goes on and on. For $35, this was an amazing deal, and I think right now it's going for around $38 or $39, which is still a really good deal. I may actually make a full review of this case, which if you want to see, make sure you let me know in the comment section down below. Assembly of the system went very smooth, and I installed free unactivated Windows 10, which I have a tutorial for that I'll link down in the description below. Once this was done, I overclocked my CPU to 3.6 GHz across all cores, which is a very conservative overclock as most of these chips should easily reach the 3.8 GHz mark. But all I wanted was a quick and dirty overclock and this worked just fine. In terms of games, I tested four games which range in difficulty. These games included Overwatch, Fortnite, PUBG, and one of the latest and hardest to run games, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Starting with Overwatch, I set everything to medium with 100% resolution scaling, which is much harder to run than the medium preset. At 1080p, the system put out a respectable 105 FPS average. This was a really smooth experience and looked really great as well. Moving on to Fortnite, which is too popular not to benchmark, I went with these kind of pro settings, which is what a lot of people play on. At 1080p, the system had an average of 93 FPS, which was a very good experience, and you could even turn down the settings a little to get even more FPS. Wait. Moving on to PUBG, which is a game that usually wrecks my budget builds, the system held up surprisingly well at 1080p, medium settings, the system averaged 62 FPS, which is a pretty enjoyable experience, Finally, for my final boss of benchmarks, I tested the system on Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a very difficult to run game. At 1080p, using the built-in benchmark, I set everything to low, and this resulted in a 53 FPS average. While not ideal to play on that low of settings, this shows that modern AAA gaming is still possible on the system. Now, I was pretty happy with these results, but the biggest thing that surprised me was how GPU bound these tests were. During many of the benchmarks, the GPU was sitting at 100% usage, while the CPU was sitting at around 50% usage, which means this old quad core could handle an even more powerful GPU. If I had known this going in, I would have probably spent $50 more and got a used RX 480, which may have balanced out the system a lot more. With all this being said, for $300, the system gave a great deal of performance for the money and doesn't look half bad either. Overall, I'm very happy with this build and hope this inspires some of you to go out and put together a budget build of your own. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up as well as consider subscribing for more PC and tech related content in the future. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.